Well, our speaker today is the Honorable Former Governor Bill Sheffield. We are honored to have him, and I've got a nice bio to tell you a little bit about him if you've never met him. Um, so go ahead and jump into that. Bill Sheffield came to Alaska in 1953 as a regional sales representative for Sears Roebuck and in charge of television sales and service. He became one of the top salesmen in the nation during the 1950s and began his leadership and business groups such as the JCs and the Chamber of Commerce. In 1960, he purchased an Anchorage hotel and founded Sheffield Enterprises. In 1964, literally the day before the giant Alaska earthquake of March 27, 1964, Mr. Sheffield opened a new hotel in Anchorage, beginning an expansion that peaked at 16 hotels and 750 employees all around Alaska and the Yukon, becoming one of the largest employers in the region. He sold the company in 1987 to Holland America Line West Tours. While in business, Mr. Sheffield served as president of the Alaska State Chamber of Commerce and the Alaska Visitors Association. As a candidate for governor in 1982, Bill Sheffield's message of inclusion and problem solving helped him win the governorship in a landslide. He then turned his attention to curbing the runaway growth in the state government, promoting efficient business style management of public works projects, and saving more of Alaska's oil wealth from the Alaska Permit Fund, which is now worth more than $40 billion. As governor, he also worked to position Alaska for the inevitable decline in North Slope oil production, the principal source of public wealth in the state. Since leaving office in 1986, Governor Sheffield has taken seats on several private and nonprofit boards, served as an economic development consultant specializing in natural resource development, and served as port director for the city of Anchorage. He is a trustee of Alaska Pacific University, formerly a member of the advisory board of NSTAR Natural Gas, a charter member of Commonwealth North, Alaska's leading public affairs forum, past chairman of the Federal Salary Council, former Alaska chairman of the United Nations 50th year celebration, and received the Lifetime Achievement Award in business from Alaska Business Monthly 2006. He is also the retired president and CEO of the Alaska Railroad Corporation, and now serves as its vice chairman of the board. In recognition of service to the railroad and to the state of Alaska, the Alaska Railroad Depot at the Ted Stevens International Airport was named after Governor Sheffield in 1999. Mr. Sheffield, in his fourth retirement, is traveling across the state speaking on behalf of the in-state gas pipeline that is currently before the legislature. Please help me welcome former, former Governor Bill Sheffield. Well, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to uh, come here today and talk about a subject that's been bothering me for a long, long time. I, uh, I'm about 75% retired, and uh, probably another year or so I might make 100%, but then you have too much time on your hands. And so uh, I've been, this is my uh, eighth or ninth stop on my trip across Alaska to uh, promote the in-state gas line. We've been talking about this for 40 years, 30 years, and lines, small lines, in-state lines. And, uh, and so I I, uh, I got really excited, so I, I, I'm helping, helping the group, AGDC, uh, it, to um, to promote the line. So, uh, and I was just talking to Bill down here at the front table. Uh, he said uh, he missed Don Dickey Day, you know, and, and uh, I was chairman, state chairman under Don Dickey, uh, who was with the state chamber for ever, I think. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And we did a lot of good things, I think. Well, thank you for the opportunity to 
here today, and I, I want to talk about the future and, and what we can do uh, for the present and future citizens of Alaska. Uh, we're on the, on the threshold, on the edge, and the many communities already over the edge of an energy crisis in Alaska. Too many of our residents are struggling uh, to deal these days with bills to heat their homes and cook their meals, and, and that adds up to the price of a monthly mortgage. And uh, it's only going to get worse the longer we work. We all know what Bush communities have to pay for these basic comforts. Uh, we all know what Fairbanks has been to put up with and that people are burning so much fire air quality in the sewer. They say twice as much as China. I don't know if that's really true or not. But when you're in Fairbanks and you're up a little bit high in the hills looking down at the valley, it's just like fog, you know, so it's, something's happening. And we all know that the decline in natural gas production from coal has caused a loss of hundreds of jobs on the Kenai Peninsula. Uh, it will drive up both domestic and commercial energy costs just Years. We have a solution before us, and it's the in state natural gas pipeline. We bring gas from tremendous reserves already approved, as uh, and more than what we put up in the future. This is something we can do if we just make a political will to do it. Doing so will not only profit the present population, construction, and operation, job creation it will benefit our state's children and grandchildren through low energy costs as well. The acronym of the solution is ASAP, that's a shorthand for electrical pipeline, commonly referred to in the past as the So, uh, so uh, it, it could bring natural gas to Frank, as you can see on the map there. Uh, the line comes down past livelihood where there's going to be a gold mine uh, eventually. It'll need some power. And it could on down to Nan and on down to Cook eventually. It could also allow Flint Hills to return to full production and eliminate uh, uh, its need for, for expensive products. Uh, they can bring more affordable energy to many rural communities, and many of which now depend on large and increasingly expensive diesel vehicles in the We could make the proposed online Example of what I'm talking about, how we get affected, how, you know, how a gas line, the, the cost of heat, jeopardizes other businesses as well. So in the past, Flint Hills but they had all three stacks working, they only use one stack, the refinery now. They used to send 130 rail cars a day down to the port. Jet fuel for the Anchorage Airport, gasoline for South Central Alaska, and other products like NAFTA, and ship months shipping to South America and Asia. And now, with the price of oil and the lack of profit at the cheap gas at the, at the, at the refinery, like of uh, the other. Next third of the barrel of oil makes the products. The next third, the last third of the 
the barrel, they go back in the pipeline and pay a fairly stiff penalty cost. And so that could change. And now instead of the cars, there are 20 cars five days a week. So, and uh, so the railroad lost the biggest customer. market in the world, and the price of coal went down to way low from what it was last year. I wrote it to a million tons. The steward from Anchorage this year, maybe three, four hundred thousand. So you see, it, everything affects the economy, and we need to fix those things. It cut operating costs for many other businesses. what customers have to pay for products. So, with cooking and gas, the price of, um, I guess I'm going to talk about agriculture on the market. This agriculture plant, fertilizer plant on Kenai, uh, when, when they were working the plant, So I, what I'm saying is it would be possible to the reopening of the agrium plant on the Kenai Peninsula. 25 to 350 $8,000 jobs uh, disappeared when cooking and gas supplies began to shrink. That's a big amount of people. So, with, with all the possible problems in the state gas line, how can we possibly not afford it? We have 35 trillion cubic feet of proven reserves on the North Slope, and I've yet to meet anyone who knows anything about gas. Who doesn't believe that there is that much more out there yet to be discovered? It's a constant government and provide public service and, and, and I know that that $7 billion or if it's $8 billion or a six, we don't know the exact price yet. We'll find that out a little later. I have to pay for it outright in order to reduce tariffs. And therefore, use your cost as much as possible with the clean oil production, state possibly needing to draw on its reserves money uh, to operate government and provide public services. You know, the state government cost goes up by 10, 12 percent a year. I don't know why, but I know that, that my view in cash might not prevail. But any amount of money that the state of Alaska pays that cost of that pipeline down, it, re it reduces the tariff. The tariff was all the way down to the bottom, have four and a half, five and a half dollar gas. The tariff is fully, if the pipeline is Financed to start out with gas about nine dollars and a quarter, if you want to estimate in Anchorage, be a little less than Fairbanks. And if you pay five hundred dollars a month for your gas bill in Anchorage, the same bill in Fairbanks should be fifteen hundred dollars. So by the time you add up your utilities and everything else that goes with it, it's like a mortgage. So that uh, that's the really bring in the key on cook in what two thousand fifteen means is that that's when Anchorage 
is going to have to be uh, contracted for gas, probably from Canada, probably come in from Prince Rupert for South Central Alaska. And so here we are sitting on our own gas, and we're buying it from Canada, shipping it in here. And, uh, and uh, at that point, my, maybe even cheaper than, than, than what we're Eventually, if we get a state gas line, then we don't have to do those things. This is really about, uh, about when the longer we avoid making the decision to go forward on this gas line, the more expensive this project will get. <clears throat> AGDC predicts that every year of delay will raise the cost by $200 plus million. And even if we were to set, you got to get ready to go tomorrow, it would take three or four years to secure the necessary remaining permits and go through over the season. And then in 2016, we could start construction. I'm not working on a large diameter pipeline project, but you've heard all about the 48 inch line and the 42 inch line that's going to America through Canada. And, uh, and the line from Prudhoe Bay to Maldives, wherever. And uh, when, we, when we, and it's a good example of the cost of the delay. They say it's $65 billion to the line down to Canada. It's, and they want to take the pay for that. Uh, the line from, uh, from say, from uh, Prudhoe Bay to Maldives is about $5 billion. And I'm not too sure where that money is coming from. And I'm not too sure they're gonna, when they're going to make a decision. We don't need to wait for those decisions. We need to put the gas line in the state. And uh, I always say uh, gas for Alaskans, uh, oil is for the state budget. And get on with it and put somebody in the matter forever and put some infrastructure in the state to uh, lower the cost of living to Alaskans uh, almost uh, not everywhere, but as much as possible. Once you get gas down to Cook Inlet, once you get gas to Fairbanks, then you can, you can feed that gas to Fairbanks. You can make propane out of it. You can make uh, some jet fuel, some synthetic jet fuel. You can fill some diesel out of it. You can make compressed gas for buses and trains industries that we can supply jobs for. And uh, make no mistake, uh, we have plenty of work to be done. We have to get to open season. And open season is, uh, is really the last step before you let the contract start down. To get to that important stage, when the last GDC has them, the more likely they are to draw serious solid commitments from gas buyers and gas sellers. Governor Parnell and uh, Fosky, uh, Dan Fosky and his group of people uh, uh, are going to be really commended for work that they've done uh, up to now. They're miles ahead of anybody else. And as Governor Parnell said, uh, said it well and he's 
State of the State Address this January when he singled out AGDC legislation as a must-pass bill. And uh, that would add a lot of horsepower to the uh, Alaska Gas uh, Development Corporation. I, I think that uh, I'd also like to tell you that uh, one person was texting some folks that uh, I'm getting paid <laughs> for, for what I'm doing. I, 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 nobody's offered to pay me, by the way, but, uh, but and I, and I wouldn't accept it anyway. I'm doing this on my own uh, uh, as an Alaskan uh, for, uh, over 60 years and uh, a good life. And, uh, and I just uh, I think that this is something that we can do that will help Alaskans for a long, long time, hundreds of years, and uh, it lower the cost of living, make things better for everyone, and uh, we uh, should do that and call it a victory for Alaskans. Thank you. Sure. Okay. The governor is willing to take some questions, so. much about that, uh, but um, my feeling about, about, about infrastructure, and the reason is my feeling about the about infrastructure in the state of Alaska, in, in, in any state, two important things that the state should, uh, in my opinion, is keep building its infrastructure and maintaining it, and education. I think we do a fairly good job in education, but we do a lousy job in infrastructure in the state. Um, we haven't built anything in a long time that would help masses of people, and uh, whether it be a road to someplace, and, and I can cite a whole lot of examples and some of the things did when I was here, but but it's it's we 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 we, we see things to death and we don't get it done. So the, the private sector, if if finance it, and the private sector, some private sector is going to benefit from it. Of course, if you pay cash, uh, then uh, there's there's a, there's a, not the possibility, but uh, thought through. But, uh, I think the private sector will benefit, uh, business can benefit by starting businesses using the gas we have to manufacture items uh, and, and uh, that employ people. I've always thought that the state should put the infrastructure in, then let the business community come in and take that infrastructure and use to create jobs and profits for, for, for them and whatever they're doing and create jobs. And that's how the state gets its money back. So um, I agree is about my thoughts on it. Well, on the gas, uh, on, on the price of gas, Fairbanks is paying about $23 now. And if we had an instant gas line, it'd be down around uh, nine and a quarter. So it'd be more than half. More than half. And, and, and Anchorage would be maybe slightly higher than that. Uh, but but it, it depends, and then it, it, we don't really know that. That's that's what the the, the AGDC um, 
they've done a lot of work on this, a lot of financial work. Uh, that's, that's if you finance it and you pay in the interest and so on and so forth. If you, the, the more you pay that down, the bill down, the less interest and the, uh, the, um, uh, the cheaper the gas. Is there a potential to turn some of that gas into liquid? Yes, uh, I've talked about that, and uh, some people think I'm crazy. But, you know, if we can truck gas from Palmer to, to uh, Fairbanks uh, uh, successfully, uh, I even had a plan once to truck gas to Homer, but I, but I, I couldn't put it together. And uh, but if we can truck gas, we can barge gas. So... Just let your mind wander a little bit. You can start at Hoon or start at Juno or start at Sick and work any way you want to go. But you put in a grid system. That's your storage of gas in your grid system that takes the gas to your boiler. And, and, and you have a barge come in once a month or every two weeks, whatever it is. And, and you that, that storage, that grid. And then you and then they, they, they themselves and they're able to do the village or the town or whatever it is and, and uh, put, the, put the distribution system in, then go to the next town and do that. Eventually, you can have gas all through southeast Alaska, you know, pretty much. But we can't do it. We can't do anything till we get the open season and get this thing figured out. And so that's a $400 million problem, which is a very small problem uh, if, 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 you, if you're successful, and I don't know any reason why we wouldn't be successful. How do you equate the density of gas on the subsistence dam? And do you think that the subsistence dam would be eating a lot of the demand for the electricity generated by the gas? I can tell you that I make the pipeline. Uh, the, uh, you know, in a way, the, the, the two projects don't interfere with each other. Uh, the gas is for people's homes. But uh, if you're thinking about one town dam being uh, big enough to, uh, to supply power to all the large cities and, and uh, everything up and down the line. And if you think that they're going to, to that there's enough money in the world to convert all these buildings, all these commercial buildings over to electricity for the heat, uh, I think it's impossible. Just kind of think about what, if you just had electrical power, didn't have an in-state gas line, you're going to convert everything to electricity. That's a, a, a big job, and, uh, and so I think that uh, if, they, if they're just going to supply electricity to the utilities, uh, that's okay, but uh, what the utilities really want, in, in my mind, and I've listened to Joe Griffith uh, testify before this uh, resources committee, they want gas. They're using gas now, and and so uh, you know I, I I'm not against one time. I'm the guy that builds the sitting dam to begin with, <laughs> yeah. But it was for different reasons. It was it was going to cost way too much, and before I got there, somebody wanted to build a dam, and they were going to pay cash for it, but. But gas was supposed to, oil was supposed to go to seventy-five dollars a barrel. It was a barrel. It was about forty, and, and and it went down to stayed around twenty-eight for most of my term as governor, and then it went to nine. And so, and so I went to Wall Street and said, "How can we build Susitna?" And they said, "Sure, you can build it. 
give us a full faith and credit of the state of Alaska and your permanent fund. Well, made the decision pretty easy. We didn't have a lot of time to make a lot of to think about it because things are going to hell in a handbasket. So we we took a train and put a passenger car in the back of the freight train one night from Anchorage, and we killed sitting down right around Hurricane Gulch. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just something you had to do. But then it took us a year to shut it down. I mean, there's a lot of money spent. We had engineering companies on next to the top floor of the World Trade Center. I told them, we, we can't afford you if you're going to have this kind of place with hardwood floors and Persian rugs on the floor and everything. So anyway, it, 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 just, it just was too much. Now, Wontana is a third. It just, here's Wontana the old days at this high, and then they were, and then now it's a third. Uh, and so it costs less. But we're another five to seven years away, further away than the gas line would be if we had an in-state gas line in place. That's a, that's a problem for me. Governor, can you talk a little bit uh, about uh, demands, uh, supply, and uh, surplus of the gas? We've been shipping uh, liquefied natural gas out of Alaska since the 60s. So is there any excess gas coming through this line? Yeah, any size line that you use, there will be, be a surplus uh, gas in that line. And you would want to, uh, you'd want to sell some some gas, and, and, and I don't know how much that would be, but there would be some gas. But as, as I, th I said earlier, I don't care if we ever sell any gas to Asia or someplace else. Let's use it ourselves. Let's use all we can ourselves uh, to uh, help businesses start and continue to run, help, help people, the homeowners. It's our gas. And, uh, and and so I, I think that uh, we'll have to sell some gas because uh, you will have too much. But uh, it's not market driven. My plan is not market driven. That's why none of those plans have worked so far. They're all market driven. And by the time they get the plan out there, the market's gone. You know, <laughs> that's just how it's been. It's not been, not been good for us. This plan's not market driven, it's for Alaskans. Gas for Alaskans. Gas for here. Gas for everywhere. And, uh, and uh, it'll take 20 years to do that, you know, some of the remote places, but uh, it, it's something we ought to do. These are good questions. I guess that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity.